He gets mad. Because you don't leave it alone. You don't fucking leave it alone. Or that's fucking. That's alone. Ray's mo. That's the totem pole of dumb. I've literally he asked finds, you, like, he finds what he wa- what it, he latches onto it like a fucking leech, like a dumb, <laughs> stupid leech, and then just starts to migrate into your brain and holds on to a little section of it until you fucking freak out. It's like that twenty-year-old joke, Bill. Huh? Now you know how I feel all the time. Yeah, but that twenty-year-old <laughs> kind of got it. <laughs> Like, I'm a fine. I can't have that. Regardless, you beep it or what else. It doesn't matter. Like, it, that's just one thing I asked for. That and the Like, I don't want nothing of that shit can go out. That's it. I don't, you know now, I can mean? I sit? Can I? Do I have to beep that you just said? Yeah, you just said it. We didn't yeah, even you bring it up. That. Can you beep? Because, yeah, please. Twice. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Sure. Sure, Diana, bad words. Whatever you need, buddy. <laughs> Is Whatever you need, Bill. Bill's the one that asked for the most out of this show. Whatever you need, baby. Whatever you need, we'll get you a fedora. I'm not we'll get you a feathered a fucking boa. Whatever you want, man. Whatever you want, bad words. No, and yeah. the, I'm not kidding. Actually, like, next time that we do this live, we'll have a fucking red carpet runway for old, <laughs> <laughs> old Diana you, bad words to bro, walk bad down words. in his Thank fucking you. heels and his gray beard and just bleep out every stupid shitty thing he you. says. Your goddamn nickname is Trash Can, and we have to bleep out half the shit you say because you get so sensey <laughs> about it. For fuck's sake, Bill. And, Ray, we're doing the show. We're on camera. Start pu- stop putting away your shitty fucking equipment that didn't work the first time we tried to do the show. Jesus Christ, yeah. I work with a couple of fucking apes. Holy oh, man, fuck. this yum, this yum berry. We're not really there yet, good. Bill. We're not there yet. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Welcome to the Simple Mind Sports Show, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. This is Friday Headlines. Thank God. Uh, August 7th. Here we go. Fuck. This is going to be a good one, baby. This is going to be a good one. Holy shit. <laughs> Simple minds. For fucking Christ's sakes. The bottom of the totem pole of dumbs. The best nickname the, what, that's what ever been given bottom, to anybody. What good he's doing right now? What does your shirt say? Get tucked? Why don't you get fucked? For Christ's sakes. This show, ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to announce, is brought to you by Wild Basin. The best seltzer in the game. A product of Oscar Blues Brewing. The, the people that brought you Dale's Pale Ale for you beer drinkers. Some of the best shit on the planet. And speaking of best shit on the planet, if you haven't had it yet, and we got a, we got a professional seltzer drinker here at the bottom of the screen, Mr. Billy Trashkin. Look, not do. being biased, not being biased as our sponsor, but this is top of the list in terms of seltzers that I've had. You? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Which one are you drinking? You're drinking the bl- uh, black raspberry? I got the black one? raspberry right now, but I actually just finished a yummy berry in about 12 seconds. So... Yep. They're so both I fucking just, bangers. I just opened the uh, wild berry, uh, the yummy berry one, and oof, it's a game changer. But dude, that black uh, black raspberry one, I, I think I texted you guys earlier. It's one of the best ones I've had, and it's I'm delicious. Them all. It's delicious. It's, and it's in the game. It's got hundred cows, one carb, zero sugar, gluten free. So one. you know, so, old uh, old old balls, bad words can keep the poundage off. Ray is on location right now, so unfortunately he he's uh, not able to partake. We'll, we'll get him his, his drinks when he gets back. But, yeah, this show is brought to you by Wild Basin. Um, do us all a favor. Do yourself a favor and kick those other brands to the side, at least for a weekend, and give this shit a try. It's available at all your local uh, beer, sp- beer spots in New Hampshire and your fucking packies down in Massachusetts. Go get yourself a fucking 12-pack and have a fucking evening. So I did. And Wild I Basin. Told, I did uh, mention it earlier. I, I, I texted a friend and said, hey – we're sponsored now. You can only drink our shit. And they texted me back and said, I love their black raspberry one. I'm no said, lie. I, no lie. I'll show it to you. No lie. They said, we already do drink your shit. It's yep. the best yep. shit on, on the market. Yep. So Perfect. good for us. We know how to pick them. Um, all right. So let's dive in here. Uh, headline show. Let's kick off with our Bruins. 
who uh, dropped their second round robin game last night to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Remind me, Ray, what time was I supposed to shut my phone off yesterday when the Bruins were going to kick their ass? What time uh, was it? Five o'clock. Five o'clock. I actually yep. ended up keeping my phone on as the Bruins gave up a zero-two lead with about nine minutes left in the within the first nine minutes of the first period. Mm-hmm. Uh, so with that, they have eliminated themselves from getting. One of the top two seeds uh, going into the playoffs. Seeds. Both top Sorry, seeds. Sorry, both. Both. Simple minds. I just said that wrong. Um, and, you know, initially it looked like they didn't want come here to play. No, I know. I think I have it. We've, we've kind of texted about this. So I think I have a different opinion about this game than you guys do. So let, uh, let me allow you guys to shit on our Boston Bruins before I may bring just a, a tiny ray of sunshine of hope into this. So uh, hockey guy, Ray on location, undisclosed. What was your initial thoughts of your big bad Bruins who were supposed to make me shut my phone off yesterday? Uh, the only one that's playing right now is Chris Wagner. Uh, the only guy with two goals on the team for the past two games, two shots, six hits, one goal uh, against the Tampa Bay Lightning. I mean, maybe he has to give this speech out to the team because he's the only one that looks like he showed up down in uh, up in Toronto in that bubble. Right now, the rest of the team just looks like dog poo poo, and it's uh, no no bueno for us right now. The summer of Wagner, um, Billy. Bad words. You, do do you have the same? Um, sentiment, and if so, what do you blame the lackluster start on? So I do not agree with anything Ray Ooh. said outside of Chris Wagner being your best guy. Um, that's the only thing sur- I said. You, that's the only thing I said. You idiot! You're right. Jesus Christ! It's not no, a surprise like, no, that Bill like, is, I, is not in agreement with Raymond. I don't think I that's, happen- I don't think that's happened yet on the show. I, don't just put I, it I have just real estate there, baby. All right, so. I, I listened to it on the radio on the way home. I was on the way home, and I was what a not, fucking old ball thing. To say. <laughs> I was driving home in the middle of the game. I, okay, I, well, I, yeah, I, I I couldn't, I'm they, they sorry to interrupt are. you, Bill. I couldn't not let that happen. No, that's good. Yeah, that's I good. listened to it on the radio. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go on. I, I know they lost, and I, they lost to an inferior team in my eyes. But I take this as a step in the right direction. You know, you saw in the first period, and I texted you. They're lifeless. You kind of got back to me and said, no, no. And I I came home and I watched the game from the first period on. You dominated for period and a half or until the last two minutes, minute and a half of the third period. You know, you you saw what you had in the Bruins from the start this year. You know, you had life. Tuka Rask, as much as I hate his guts, you saw him. He was making big saves. You know, I, I don't put the third goal on him. You know, it's a it's a rebound he probably should have had, but again, it's a rebound that kind of kicked off. And the worst thing I uh, the, the the thing I hated most about this our defense or Bruins defense is not looking good. Uh, Zanino Char is looking like a forty three year old uh, defenseman. I think he was on the ice for both goals, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then right after that, I mean, that's what you're seeing. And then we had a bright. Bright side in uh, the, the scrimmage, Stanika looked like shit after the first period in the uh, game two, benched in game three. So, I mean, the worst case scenario, I've been preaching about this since the start of this bubble, is you went from the one seed to, to the four seed. But, but, Montreal. Well, we'll there. get there. So, let me give you my take. So, Ray, that uh, curiously sounds like the text I sent Bill after he was freaking out about the Bruins getting sm- smoked last week. No, I, but I, I will. I, I will again. just I say you, I, I will totally disagree with you. I though, will Rich. just right. say, Bill. Right. I will just say I agree with your take. Ooh. I agree with your take on that. That no, this this is actually what I think. The the um, look, we went into this, and I I think we've all been on the same uh, wavelength here where. Cassidy came out and if not outright said it alluded to it, that they were going to take these round Robin games like preseason games, essentially, and not uh, either play their players or not play it um, the way that they might play it as if it were a uh, um, playoff game. You've seen a little bit of that. You've seen switching up lines. Obviously Halak got the first start bill. You got a conspiracy theory. I I think I agree with that Cassidy uh, benched to caress, but there's been talk that maybe they just wanted to get Halak in there. So however you want to dissect that, I will just say I disagree with the way that they went approach that they approach these round robin games. I also agree. But you know, I, 
But what I'll say is after that, the first half of that period and the lightning came down and scored two quick ones off of terrible turnovers, no back checking, shitty fucking defense, the same lackluster play that we've seen in, in the scrimmage in the first round Robin game. They did go, they, you did see a noticeable difference. I don't know if it started with Krug starting the fight with uh, Coleman, I believe who took a uh, cheap shot on uh, Carlo at first, and then he took another cheap, cheap, cheap shot on Bjork and later in the uh, game that him. everyone – was it Coleman? I don't know. Whatever. Fuck it. I'm just saying, Krug took that fight, and we saw for what you said, Bill, most of the game, the Bruins maybe not dominate, but were in control and, and pushing the momentum, pushing the tempo. The Lightning had their chances, but, you know, the, the Bruins were mostly in control until the last three minutes of the game. And this is where, if you go listen to our Wednesday show, the Lightning are just fucking better than you. They're just better. There was a bad turnover by Carlo that, that, uh, that gave up that third goal. And a bad – look, Tuca was given a bad rebounds all night. And he got away with a couple of them. He made a couple of fucking incredible saves. Tuca kept you in that game for sure. But that, that last goal wasn't on Tuca. I mean, that was the way you kicked it away and, and he cleans it up because yeah. they got they, the Bruins got caught looking at the fucking puck. They got caught being lazy. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me summarize here quickly. Number one, the Lightning are fucking better than you. If you're going to beat the Lightning, you have to play 100% the entire game. And you did. You played 100% three, two and a half quarters minus three minutes. You played... Yeah. As good as you as good as you needed to, to to maintain that game. Number two, positive side. Here's my ray of sunshine. I think they woke up. I don't think I don't think you're, they're going to come out Sunday against the Capitals. We'll probably beat them because the Capitals always beat them. But I don't oh, think you're going to I don't think you're going to see a game where we go. What the fuck? What the fuck are you guys doing? Come to play. Get get your shit together. If they lose, they'll lose with dignity at least. I think that I what I'm taking out of this is they woke up. On the contrary, the quote out of Tuka fucking Rask after that game, and I'm going to quote unquote, it doesn't matter where we land, we have to play everybody anyways. Factually fucking incorrect, Tuka, you don't. If you just held on to the number one seed that you had, you could have avoided either the Lightning or the Capitals in the, to the Eastern Conference Finals, or both of them, if for some reason they got knocked off the way the Penguins are looking like they're going to get knocked off by the Canadians because it's the NHL playoffs. So, yeah, that's, that's my ramble on this Bruins thing. Uh, bright side, I think they got their head of the rest. Dark side, it took them too long, and now they're going to have to play the hardest road possible as a four seed. Although, yeah, it looks like they're going to play the Carolina Panthers in round one because the Penguins are going to shit their, shit their per, uh, playoffs away. Nope. Yep. Um, you saw Cassidy switch up the lines. You saw um, uh, DeBrusque on the third line. You saw Nick Ritchie on the second line. And then you actually saw in the second and third period, you saw a lot of pass knack on the second line, which I've been preaching for to give consistent consistent scoring throughout the lines. We're going to talk about this later, so I'm, I don't want to – divulge too deep into it but well right we're gonna dive into all things we're gonna dive into all things bruins for um fat tuesdays next fat tuesday show so if you're a bruins fan tune into that we'll we'll kind of maybe we'll get more into the lines and stuff but i agree with you bill but i I think they should do that debrusco look like shit in the third line so keep him with bergeron and marshan maybe with krejci but look you don't have to go uh, like you said, we'll get into it a little bit more in detail, but I, I, I don't think DeBrus belongs on the third line. I don't think he fits there. I think that's a Nick, I think that's a Nick Ritchie position, but we can but get more into it later. When you're asking for six and a half million dollars a year and you're not producing and you're the most inconsistent, one of the most in, inconsistent players on the Boston Bruins, you need to go on that third line, stop asking for this, that much money. And that's the rumor coming out. Sorry, a little off topic, but it, it's been annoying me for a little while, him. Feels like it. So uh, just quickly to wrap up in the NHL, um, looks like Panthers are moving on over the Islanders and Canadians. No, all the way around. Islanders are moving on. I I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. No. No, you're right, Rich. Panthers I'm are, right. I, I thought, sorry, I thought Islanders was. No, Panthers two one. 2-1. Two one are up to yeah. one and that will be the inevitable matchup for the Bruins if they finish in fourth place which we all expect them to because the Canadians are up to one on the Penguins after beating them four three yesterday so 
I was going to ask you, are you nervous? But it looks like the Bruins are basically going to avoid the Canadians unless they get to the Eastern Conference Finals is the way that that is, yep. is shaken out. Now, all yep. things depend, obviously, on Sunday with the Capitals game and if the Penguins can make a two-game comeback here. But, um, you know, you can stop shitting in your boots, Billy fucking old balls. The Canadians aren't coming to town. Don't worry. I, I never – don't I worry, the 12 no. seed Canadians aren't coming to beat the Bruins. Although Carey Price they, looks fucking I, hot. I never said they were going to beat the Bruins. I just said it was horseshit that a 12 seed could make the playoffs. That's all I fucking <laughs> said. But this is coming up all Bruins, even if you go to the four seed. Um, I've been shitting on it for a while, but you're on neutral ice. I think, yes, you're playing a higher seed, but being on neutral ice is huge in the NHL because I feel like in the NHL, you play so much off your crowd. I feel like your teams get so much in, more into the game than any other sport playoffs. Like, that, that gets your team going more than anything. So, now you're on neutral ice. Anything can happen on a neutral ice. You know what well, I mean? I'll give you one more thing. I'll give you one thing that we have to get off the NHL. The Flyers beat the Capitals today. So, there's a good chance the Flyers get the number one seed. So, the, it might come up Bruins, where if the Bruins get four seed, Flyers get one seed, then you still might only have to play either the Capitals or Lightning once either way. So, give me still, the Flyers again. Still completely fucking opposite of what Tukares thinks the NHL playoffs are. You don't have to play everybody. You're only going to play one of these teams, either the Capitals or the Lightning. If you get that 4 seed in the in the Flyers get the 1 seed. So, yeah, I I I take my chances if you can get to the Eastern Conference Finals against the Flyers, then the Capitals who you can never beat and the Lightning who are better than you, probably better than everybody in the league from a skill standpoint. Flyers just got hot nine out of 10 before the break continue it now. So, you know, yep. we'll see. We'll see. I, I do hate that fucking rhetoric. The Flyers, the hottest team going into the break. They were five, though. They were five months later. <laughs> They're still hot. They're still hot. Yeah. Okay. It's just what it is. What it is. Uh, moving on to the NBA Celtics got a blowout win against the Nets. 149 to 115. When it's rolling, it looks easy for the green, man. When it's rolling and the shots are going down, it looks fucking smooth and it looks easy. Jason Tatum played 18 minutes and scored 18 points or 14 minutes and scored 18 points. He got three fouls in the first quarter and uh, one of them with a bad, stupid offensive foul, lowering his right-hand shoulder, which is the same shit that I've been talking to you guys about for weeks. Mm. Does not have a move going into the lane. Doesn't have a spin move to get off. People are forcing him to his left. He doesn't know how to get there. That is a, a side topic. But regardless, yep, the Celtics His third blew. foul too, Rich. Sorry to interrupt though. Nope. Terrible Brad Stevens challenge. It was clearly on the hand. And even stupid Jeffy M. Van Gundy's like, yeah, good. But then the replay showed it was right on his hand. Terrible I'll tell challenge. You why I don't, I'll tell you why I don't mind the challenge. Because it's the early second quarter. Your star of the team is, um, is on the verge of getting his third foul and having to sit the rest of the half. Take the risk. See if, see if you can get away with one. Now, Obviously, it, it was clearly a foul. I understand what you're saying, and uh, hindsight is it was clearly a foul. But Jason Tatum had barely played to that point. Yeah. And I don't, you know, the question I, ha I was going to have after all of this is, is Brad Stevens managing the game the way that he's going to manage the game in the playoffs? Or is he managing the game in preparation of the playoffs? And the reason why I say that, and I'll come to you, Ray, is – the fucking lineups that he threw out there last night. Now, I'm not talking garbage time. I'm talking first half. There was a lineup of Shem Shemi Ojale, Brad Wanamaker, Romeo Lankford, who impressed me, Jalen Brown, and Marcus Smart. Who's scoring there? Jalen Brown? That's it. Yeah. That's all yeah. you got. Marcus that Smart is a, is a starter there, I guess, I guess but, you know, and then they did the same thing later on in the game. They just switched out Brown for Tatum in, in, in the third quarter. So, so there, was, there was that. Uh, Jalen was hot last night. He, he was red hot from behind the line, and he continues to play really well. Um, but, yeah, so that was going to be my question to you, Ray, is Brad Stevens uh, managing these lineups in preparation for the playoffs or the way that he's going to manage them in the playoffs? And stop clicking your fucking pen. The preparation for the playoffs. 
Uh, basically, you saw Robert Williams, who hasn't seen any action in this bubble for the past three games, go off tonight, uh, last night, seven for seven, uh, 19 minutes, five boards, looked great. I mean, you need more of that. Romeo Langford, who hasn't had much playing time either, went out there, uh, didn't contribute a lot, but he had a lot of minutes. So, I mean, fuck. I'll I mean, disagree with you that he didn't contribute a lot. Romeo Langford impressed me more than anybody on the court last night. Romeo Langford's defense was – NBA the defense, caliber. yes, not the offense. The offense you know who I there. hated in the Well, most I agree of. with you. Shut up, Bill. I agree with you uh, that the offense was not there, but they weren't um, uh, relying on him, and he wasn't. See, here's my biggest problem with the, with the Celtics and the way Brad Stevens manages this team and coaches this team is guys like Shemi Ojale, who, again, last night I saw shoot a 36-fucking-foot three-pointer with 10 hey, seconds left on the up. shot clock, barely hit the fucking rim. Like, what do you do? Why does that guy think he can shoot that shot? That's my problem with Brad Stevens, and that's not what I saw from Romeo Lankford. Romeo Lankford offensively went in, got offensive rebounds. He fought for the ball. He got one three-pointer that was wide open in the corner. He missed it. But he was not trying to overextend himself like the guys like Ojale, Marcus Smart, even Grant Williams does it to an extent. These these. Brad Wanamaker is the number one fucking culprit. These guys that are role players that don't know their roles, the reason you don't know your roles is because Brad Stevens hasn't given you a fucking role. He's given you wide reign to go and play street ball when you have the fucking ball, no matter who you are. That's a problem for me. What was encouraging was Romeo Lankford didn't do that. Romeo Lankford just locked fucking guys down, brought energy, got big rebounds, and played defense last night. And if you can be a wing player, at six, eight, six, seven plays like six, nine or whatever in the NBA right now, the guys you're going to match up with, he can be a value add if Brett Stevens tells him to go play defense and not shoot the fucking ball. <laughs> Sorry, Bill. Go ahead. You know how I know you're <laughs> you like Romeo Langford. <laughs> bad words. Bad words. We can't nope. say that. Don't even care. I'm going to give bad words a quota. Every, every time he hits his quota, I'm going to release all the, like, not the bad words, but the stuff that he doesn't want us to release, even though it's, like, bullshit that he doesn't want us to hey, release it. Hey, that's some serious stuff, man. You can't be I know. I'm about sorry. That, okay? I'm sorry. You're right. Say You're sorry right. to Bill. Say I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry, Bill. Right. I'm sorry, Bill. <laughs> we lost him. It's oh, fucking, I'm sorry. But his internet dude, cut out. I don't think it has anything. You don't think it has anything to do with the fact that we played a JV basketball team last night? Same JV team that beat the Milwaukee Bucks the night before? Please, the JV basketball team without Jamal Crawford, JV basketball team, and every other cut net that set out. Hey, I'll take who's a lot. the number one seed? Up, Milwaukee? right? Huh? Milwaukee's the number one seed? Is Milwaukee the number one seed? It was the seed? biggest upset in 23 years. Oh, I'm just wondering. I was just asking. Oh, Rich they came back to life. They came back to life. All right, I don't take any stock in this game. I really don't. I really don't. The Miami game is is – I take more stock in the Miami game than I do in, in beating the Nets. I don't care that they just beat Milwaukee, but literally you're playing a fucking JV basketball team. How many guys have you heard of on that team outside of the guy that dropped 50? Can you tell me his name? No, I can't because I forgot <laughs> it. <laughs> so that, that, that tells you something. Am I right? But yeah. like, well, it was a Harris good, it was play a good, good. win no, against look. a shit team. I don't well, disagree with Go I ahead, think Ray. the big, the biggest thing is that the heat they looked like crap against the Heat. They couldn't shoot the ball, and then they go off the back to back and they just do that and came back and they're dropping anything they shot last night was going in. I think they're closer to the Heat game than they are to the Nets game. No, so here's the difference. Here's the difference in these games. The, the shots went in against the Nets, and the shots didn't go in against the Heat. But when the shots <laughs> go in against the first in the first quarter and in the first half then they can blow any team. Then they can run doors on any team in the second half in the NBA because they have four fucking all-stars, people. They have the talent to compete with anybody in the NBA. They do not have Mm -hmm. the coaching and the mindset to stick with anybody, and they don't have anyone on the team. I mentioned this before. They have nobody on the team that has won anything. They have nobody on the team that can tell them how to win a ball game when they're not shooting the lights out. They don't have anybody. That game against the Nets – was not played any differently than the game played against the Heat. They just made their shots. Jalen Brown went f- like three for three, four for four from three from the beginning. Everybody was fucking making the goddamn shots. 
It's an easy goddamn game to win. It's an easy game to coach when you're making the shots, especially after back-to-back when you're not going to play your starters. Grant Williams didn't even touch the fucking floor until 30 seconds left in the game. Brad Stevens was not playing these guys. He doesn't suck. Grant Williams is better than Robert Williams. All I'd these people now. Two Robert Williams the, two, off that bitch. You're an idiot. You're no, a fucking okay, idiot. You're no. a no-brain yeah. fucking hockey dumbass. Robert Williams yeah. is sucks. Give me the Time Lord. Watch Time Lord play defense. He gets burnt every fucking defense, time. Fucking asshole. Every fucking time. Yeah, slapping your dumbass little dick away. That's her defense against you, you petty bitch. <laughs> Robert Williams blows <laughs> at defense. He sucks. He He's can run the blocker. rim and He's dunk a, the ball. Robert Williams is a shot blocker. From the opposite side of the paint when no one sees it coming because he can jump 10 feet. And he oh, jumps I'm 10 sorry. feet at everybody shooting the basketball. Have no one watched Robert Williams? What is this fascination with fucking Robert Williams? What are, he's 6'9", first of all. He's not a seven-footer. People think that he's fucking... How, how big is Grant Williams? 6'6"? Six, six? He Fuck plays him. bigger than fucking Robert Williams. and he So can does a, your mom. <laughs> no, Grant Williams is 6'8". <laughs> It's what it's unbelievable. The fuck. So that was my next question. Grant Williams and Romeo Langford, who I like because the wings dominate the NBA, the current NBA wings dominate. So if you have someone who can defend the wing, that is a value add. If you have a six, nine guy that blocks shots that has to go defend three point shooters that gets burnt on every first step that I've ever seen him try to defend in his life. He sucks. He I don't trust any of them shitbag minute. bench players. I don't trust any of them. None of them should see fucking minutes in the playoffs. Let's be real. None of them. Romeo Lankford, Will <laughs> Brothers, none of them should be on the Bill. fucking... Sorry, I apologize. Bill. Bad words. Dude, I'm going to have to... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wear out our fucking drunk. beep button tonight. I'm going to wear out our fucking beep button. The I'm, wild blaming, bases I'm are blaming this on Wild Bases. The Wild Bases are getting me too drunk. I too wild. Too wild. Fucking wild. <laughs> Dude, I'm sorry. Well, Not wild of in the fucking playoffs. <laughs> Not of them should see the playoffs unless you're in foul trouble. Seriously. Okay. None of them. Wild hogs. Well, Jason Tatum was in foul trouble. He had three fouls in the first quarter. And so Kemba Romeo was also Lankford, out too. And Kemba was out. So Romeo Lankford played, and it was a back-to-back, to back, and Brad Stevens doesn't give a shit about lineups. Brad Stevens doesn't know how to identify a lineup or or trade one out. I am I am very close to the fire, Brad. Come on, baby. Come, no, come on, baby. Come I am on, very, baby. very fucking close. This is his last playoffs he has for me. You're right, Bill. So, You're right. If I see Robert Williams playing significant time and getting burnt on in the way I saw him get burnt last night – where, where everyone praised him as the time lord because he guess. dunked a couple times and blocked JV. some shots and had 18 points. Did anyone watch him play defense? Jesus JV team. fucking JV. Christ. You saw it, Rich. JV team. Oh, I know. Rich. I know. I know, Bill, but there's still talent on that Nets team. They, but it, I'm, uh, it's less about the JV team. They beat, them by 50 fu- they beat them by 40 fucking points. Yeah, they smoked them. Yeah, fine. They're a JV team. It's more about the individual accolades that people are giving these – Celtics bench players and pumping their tires like Terry fucking scary Rozier. They're not that good, people. They're not that good. Hold on. Did you just have a, pump no, have Romeo Langford's tires? I have. I can. Fuck you, Bill. <laughs> fuck you, Bill. <laughs> did you just pump Romeo Langford's tires? Yeah, in did a very dignified fashion. In a very dignified <laughs> did you and scientific did you not fashion. Pump his fucking tires. I said no. Romeo Langford no, can play if he can baby. if he can lock down the fucking defense and is told not to shoot the ball. That is a different story. Hey, Ray. The scary the Terry trap. being Roll an all-star. Roll it back, bitch. Roll the tape back. Bill, I'm about Bill, to fucking Bill, dunk Bill, this wild basin down your throat, you fucking Diana Ross diva motherfucker. <laughs> Rick, I have a question for you. Rich. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead. So, obviously, if the Celtics lose the first round, it's going to be fire Brad. But if they lose the second round, is that are you going to join the fire Brad train? Depends not what it looks like. Toronto. Shut the fuck up, Bill. I'm not sure if he asked you. Did he say Bill? Say, I'm pretty sure he said Diana, Rich. Did I, I say, did I say no, Diana? No, I'm pretty sure he said fucking Rich. Mute. So, look. Uh, first round, fire Brad. Second round, obviously, if it's yeah. – if it's Milwaukee and you look like you did with against Milwaukee where you had Kyrie last year and gentlemen sweep, yeah, I'm I'm out. I'm fucking out. Because okay. because now I'm gonna unmute you, Bill, but be fucking civil. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you lose that way, now you're on the verge of losing Tatum. Who's mm-hmm. the future of your franchise? If you don't have a competent coach and you start to lose the confident and you start to lose that confidence in the now, they love Brad. Look, the players love Brad right now. That can change on a dime. 
if you get if you lose bad in a second round playoff this year where you are a a lot of people have you in the finals if not knocking on the door of the finals depending on Kemba's knee and if Gordon Hayward's kid comes out on time so yeah second round yeah it has to be talked about I don't know if I'm pulling the trigger yet uh I don't want to I don't want to lose another fucking Toronto? pussy bet but hold on what if, it, what if it's Toronto what if it's, it's Toronto going to be losing? Toronto because it, right it's the Toronto's the two seed so if we all if Celtics win Milwaukee wins Toronto wins we play Toronto and Milwaukee plays the worst one right is that Oh, so we, we play if Milwaukee that ha- Toronto, no matter what, Bill? All right. Okay, no. well, hold on. Let's stop Jeez. settling scores. Let me ask you this question instead of rehashing bullshit. Right now, the way you, you just said it, Bill, is, is correct, I think. But let's talk first round for a second. Would you rather be a four seed and play Indiana in the first round or play a three seed, be a three seed and play the 76ers? Uh, Give me Philly, baby. I would rather play... Indy in Milwaukee in the second round instead of Toronto because I've been on Toronto's bandwagon for a while. Okay, you know, the- put that shit down in the ledger, Ray. I will. Bill wants Milwaukee in the second round. No, and I'll, dude, you see how Van Fleet's been playing? A guy that, you know, when we were talking about the trios, no one mentioned Van Fleet. We, he's a forgotten guy on that team. Yeah, and there's Toronto's, a reason no one mentioned Van Fleet. But he's been playing good, and he played really well last year for a chance. He's got to be 50. Team. He played 10 years at Wake Forest. It doesn't matter, Rich. I'm just saying Toronto's <laughs> looking good. They're, they're, I, dude, I think you lost Kawhi, but you're still the probably the best team in the East. It's matchups for me with the Celtics. They match up better with Toronto than they do with Milwaukee because of size. It's the same. It's the yeah, same thing that, that you're scared sense. about with Philly. It's the same thing with with Milwaukee. Now, there's a huge cav- caveat with that with Giannis, and I think Giannis can be corralled, which which will change the dynamic of that team. And I think Philly's trash. My answer to my own question is: I want them to win as many ball games right now and get as good as possible. And whoever they face in the first round, fucking beat them. I don't care. Yeah. I don't is the like better the matchup. Tank. Is the better matchup Indiana? Sure, but. I disagree. I think Philly's a better matchup now that Ben Simmons is out. Ben Simmons is yeah. gone. Well, there's there's some news. Ben Simmons is out indefinitely with kneecap Dis- problems. Partial, partially dislocated kneecap. So he's done. Yeah. So, so you, now, you yeah, to, sure. You now, better play Philly and have at least a gentleman sweep in that series. Philly's a seven seed, eight seed at best without Ben Simmons. Who? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. But so, I think they're locked into the six, though, right? I don't. Yeah, I, don't, I, 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 th- yeah, I think you're sure right. Too, yeah. And I think Aaron Gordon just went down for the Orlando, too. So everyone's seedings are pretty much locked in, except for on the West. The West. The West. Yeah. Uh, the A seed. The, the A-seed Grizzlies be, have uh, gone 0 uh, 4, look like shit. Yeah. And they might Suns look amazing. Ray's number three team Ooh. looking like they're coming right up, baby. It's either them or the Suns. I the Suns can't. are four and all right now in the bubble. Yeah, yeah. Devin Booker, dude. The Devin Shardy Booker's Mayor. showing that he's a man. Was it the dude. Spurs the other night? Was it this? No, it was the Lakers. No, it was, uh, no, it was the Clippers. Clippers, Clippers. Clippers, yeah. that, oh, that, God. that buzzer thing. beater. Oh, yeah. But Booker the thing is, Bill, we, they, we can't let Ray win any of these bets because he's the worst. The absolute worst winner on the I panel. Know. He fucking sucks. Now we're all do, we're all sons of bitches. Life, like I, I understand that, but Ray, the totem pole of dumb. Whenever he has a chance to shit down someone's throat, does not does not hey, withhold mm, anything. Funny nope. you should say that, Rich. So I was meeting quickly, with, quickly. We gotta quickly, get to the next. I was thing. meeting today, and he's like, yeah, "I gotta just, fucking I'll beat that." What is he? What do you want to get to? A dozen fucking beats. You do not want to beat this. I promise you. He goes, "Is Ray that dumb, or do you got just play it up?" I go, "No, he's really that dumb. You do not have to beat that." And that's a fucking real quote. I promise you. Okay, well, we're gonna. I'm gonna have to hit the lawyers to contact Beep. H. He's fine. He's fine. All right. Fine. Uh, look, uh, Red Sox fucking won. Okay. We don't have to spend much time on this. They beat the, the Rays 5-0. Don't look now, Billy Badwards. Martin Perez is 2-1 with 3.45 <laughs> ERA. Heim Bloom pulling in the fucking ringers, baby. Five oh. innings, no runs, four Ks, four hits, three walks. The most impressive thing out of this game, the bullpen went with Colton Brewer, Austin Bryce, Matt Barnes, and Workman for four innings of no run ball. We got Verdugo with his first home run as a Red Sox. Michael Chavez put a, a big two-run shot deep. Uh, it actually looked like a baseball team out there at this rate. looks like they're winning every two of six games, which if they can get one more in that, 
they're a fucking playoff team and you guys are singing pussy and crack on a fucking stage. So worst pitching staff I've ever seen, Rich. You don't even have to finish your dumb statement. The worst <laughs> pitching staff I've ever fucking seen in our lifetime. It ain't fucking happening. Toronto's going to sweep them. It ain't fucking happening, Rich. <laughs> All right, here, here we go with the bullpen games. Ryan Webster and his fucking 11 and a half ERA. It's Ryan gonna, Weber and he has whatever. a 11.57 ERA against the whatever. Blue Jays who stink as well. Whoever Are they finally in Buffalo? No, they're in Boston tonight. They're not even in Buffalo yet. Where they're where they're trying to make a where they're trying to make a fucking little league field suitable for an MLB ball club. If the Red Sox can't beat the Blue Jays, then well, they probably won't. They'll probably they drop won't. two out of three. Easily. Look, I, I'll, I'll stay on this. The bet for other listeners that don't know it yet is I, Rich, aka you mean Mitch, believe that the Red Sox will make the playoffs, especially with ex- these expanded teams. Um, and these idiots think that they won't. If they do not make the playoffs, I have to sing. I don't even know who the artist of this song is, but the song goes, my neck, my back, lick my pussy and my crack. If I win, then these guys have to sing the same song on stage. Difference is, I'm a performing artist, and these guys don't know what a tune sounds like. So that Her her name's Kia? Okay. K-H-I-A? Kia, right? It's a beautiful name. It's a very nice name. Is that a car? Is that like the car or no? Kia Sophia? Yeah, Kia Sophia. Sounds like a car. Sounds she like is a looker, though. I will tell you this. The Red Sox did get two uh, players up into the top 100 MLB pipeline. High 40s, low 50s, and Jeter Downs and Tristan Cassius. So I don't watch know out. You, I don't know watch what, out, MLB. Here I don't we know come. What your rankings you saw because I had Cash at 89. I'll send you a link. I'll send you a link. Right, the good, listeners good, can look. Good. I'll put it out there. I yeah, said Mitch twice. Hold on, one hundred. Hold on, Ray, man. Is eighty nine above or below one hundred? No, it, it is. But where's Jeter Downs? You just said he was forty or fifty. He was forty six or forty nine or something like that. Really? What? All right, cool. Send me the list because the <laughs> yeah. list I sent you guys. Right, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Fuck you, Ray. Yeah, have another wild, have another <laughs> wild base in there, boy. Dude. More yeah. importantly, more importantly, we're up against it here, boys. We gotta get try and get through this here. More importantly, the MLB. Rob Manfred and his stupid fucking brain. His stupid, stupid brain. This guy needs to get out of professional sports as soon as possible. After uh, less than a week after saying these players need to get their shit together over the canceling season, and a couple of days after saying, never mind, we're going to play, we're not quitters, has come out and issued statements. And not in just statements, they have now initiated COVID protocols that should have been here in the first place. That similar shit that we just saw the NFL agree to in their CBA, where um, players are now not allowed to do basically what they're calling COVID activities. I'll wear a couple of them, or I'll read you a couple of them. Sorry. Players and staff must wear face coverings that cover the mouth and the nose at all times while at the ballpark other than while on the field of play itself. The new mandate includes dugout and bullpen. Another one. In order to minimize time spent together indoors, home teams must provide outdoor covered spaces for visiting team. Home teams must also provide appropriate spaces to that allow social distancing during rain delays. Another one. Traveling parties must be reduced to absolutely essential personnel. Another one, players and team personnel must wear face coverings at all times at team hotels other than each other person, individual hotel room. A member of the road team must, whether player or staff, must inform the team compliant officer if he or she wishes to leave the room hotel for any reason. Lastly, home team players and staff members are now prohibited from going to this give me a fucking Diamond's headache. words. Well, this is the big one. This give me a fucking headache. Players and staff are prohibited from going to bars, lounges, malls, or other places in which large groups will gather, similar to what the NFL um, instituted. Ray, I'm trying to unmute you. Um, this so, big fat finger. So this should, you know, like we said, this should have been done initially, no? Yeah, this should have been done all along. They probably saw what Goodell did and was like, oh, shit, I can actually do that. I can get rid of these players. The genius idea. Why don't I do this? Yeah, similar, similar to what we said. No balls, Manfred has fallen the, uh, fallen the cues from the NFL where they have all yeah. the power. Look, we didn't get to all the things we wanted to get to. NFL opt-out deadline today. No big names opted out, but Tredavious White is going to play where there's some doubts play, yeah. that he was not going to. But, uh, look, we'll get to more next time. This has been the Simple Mind Sports Show. Friday headlines, August 7th. Sponsored to by, brought to you by Wild Basin. Go get your Wild Basin. 
Uh, good night. Black Cherry Wild Basin, the best. Wait, are those kids or, or hookers in the background? It's the people across the street. Can't do anything about it. You hear, hear anything. All right, you're, you're camping with people across the street? Where are you right now, Ray? Are you <laughs> like what, what kind of establishment are you in? I'm at a cabin. Hey, until we get cut off, did you guys Narrative. see you guys see uh, Kyle Love said that Cam Newton can't play under Bill Belichick? Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah, he no, can't take criticism. Either. What do you think of that, Ray? <laughs> wait, wait till week one, baby. But Willie four McGinnis, touch, four did, touchdowns. Willie McGinnis did yards. come out and say that Cam Newton's a starter. So